All right, we're moving on to our next run. Um, we finished all the A sides. We got a long, a long trip for B sides. Let's try Beast Tainted as Azel, man. I think it can be done. Why not? We need Delirium too, right? So it's a minimum two runs, but that's that's okay. That was a, a we need a fast one after that last one sent me to the freaking Shadow Realm. These nightmarish challenges can be felt. They can be beaten. What's your favorite B-side? Oh, I mean, that's easy, right? Um, good Vibrations, the B-side. Uh, I don't know what the single was. Probably like Sloop John B or something like that. But um, Good Vibrations. Got to be one of the all-time best B-sides ever made. Didn't actually find its release on a on an album, I think, until Brian Wilson's 2004 Smile. We meant beat side character. No, we're not talking about Isaac. The, the privilege has been lost. Which honestly, I think is like a plus two in and of itself. Um, I'm gonna zap you for stats. Even at the risk of taking some damage, I'm going to zap you for stats. It's the ultimate be careful what you wish for. <laughs> we literally got stats. That's really good. Although our sneeze seems horrible. Everything else got a lot better. Range is still fine. Yeah, no sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HP? Come on. You're, you're tainted as Hazel. Going from 1 HP to 0 is actually, in my world, that's a positive. Plus, it doesn't matter if you don't take damage anyway. Get this demon some NyQuil. Yo, this last weekend, I cleaned out my medicine cabinet. And I had to, like, I have not been ill since July 2019 because I have not left my house for like the last year and a half essentially and I had to remind myself like as I went into the medicine cabinet you know we got medicated throat lozenges thank you thank you thank you um we got Buckley's cough syrup we got Robitussin you know we got all that stuff uh I, w I was like, maybe I should just throw it out. And then I realized, like, it's probably not going to be like that forever. You'll be happy you had it. But I was very tempted because I was like, you know, this stuff's taking up space. What am I doing? I'm, I don't need this anymore. Like, naively, I was like, maybe I'll just never get sick ever again. I think that's, uh, be careful what you wish for. Thank you. Just never go outside again. But how am I going to watch Cruella? If I don't... Well, I guess I could just get 35 bucks for Disney Plus Premier Access, but... It, come on, if I'm not seeing Cruella in, like, 4K D-Box with the Atmos surround sound... And the custom Cruella cup with the Cruella 101 Dalmatians, cookies and cream, caramel popcorn. Like, it's not even worth it, man. I want the whole experience. I'd give her my D-Box? Your D-Box, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, you, you, I, you, it's not for me to... It's not... No comments. I say no comment there. Best trilogy ever, in your opinion? Easy. The Matrix, if you forget the next two movies exist. If you only take the first movie, that's number one. Next question. No. 
The Before Trilogy is, yeah, I mean, that's the film student choice, no question. I mean, those are those are great movies, don't get me wrong. What a, what a slap in the face this is. Let's take it. John Wick Trilogy? John Wick Trilogy is no joke. I already know. Tell me you don't like the third movie without telling me you don't like the third movie. I disagree. I think I think the third movie is uh, is very good. Yeah, plus it's got Bobin in it. Bo 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 bobin bobin. Dude, Berserk on the whole room. Pretty flipping good. Hey, irrelevant but nice. Three one two, but it's close. Yeah, I think I, I honestly think I'm a 312 guy myself. Uh, for me, it's like three is better than one. One is a lot better than two, but I do think they're all pretty good. Perks. Who took my cigars? They are indeed making a fourth. I don't know, man. They, you know, people are like, when do you want their series to end? I want it to end um, when they make a, a bad one. When they make a bad one, in my opinion, they have my permission to stop making them. Yeah, same with Souls. As long as they keep making good ones, I, I really don't care. Even and the more ridiculous it gets, like the happier I am. Yeah, that's why I'm more skeptical of The Matrix 4 than I am of John Wick 4. No question about it. Because, like, John John Wick, the movies have been good. The Matrix is one amazing movie. One movie that's okay as long as you completely divorce it from the fact that it's a sequel that is unbelievably disappointing when you consider how good the first one was. And then one movie that essentially, uh, come on, come on, man has no reason to uh, exist and is, I mean, I guess it has a real reason to exist, which is to wrap it up, but it does so dissatisfyingly. Planetarium? No, we don't take Buddy in a Box anymore. We take Neptunus. Oh, secret, double secret rooms and secret rooms give you stats? Dude, let's go. How would you rewrite The Matrix 2? I mean, you don't... Honestly, this is now... It, it's almost just, like, too convenient for me, I guess. Um, but I feel like the thing that they did in The Matrix... Frick. Was double down in the sequels on the philosophical aspects. When I think what most people enjoyed about The Matrix... Was the fact that... Uh, it had philosophical undertones, but the actual, like, on-screen... Action was awesome. Let's go. Uh, instead, they made the... The philosophical undertones into unbelievable overtones. Uh, at the expense, I would say... And also, I mean, the CG in the sequels is not great. Like, when Neo's fighting the Agent Smiths on the playground... And it looks like a, a PlayStation 2 game, you're like... The only thing, so I, I had an online friend who saw The Matrix uh, Reloaded in theaters the night it came out. And when uh, it came, when we talked about it, like he came home, I was like, how was it? He was like, I don't know. Cause like, I sat next to this random girl during the movie and like she totally gave me an HJ. And I was like, I 100% don't believe that that happened for one. But secondarily, I don't really care. I just want to know how the movie was. But he, like, wouldn't shut up about this thing that, like... I was like, dude, we're, like, literally 14 years old. There's no chance that happened. Come on. I just want to know what the heck was going on with, with Neo and Trinity, man. 
my man. <laughs> Trinity was giving Neo an HJ. They didn't do an HJ in that movie. They they went all the way. They rounded home base during the Rave of Zion, which I'm sure has its own Wikipedia article. Yeah, then I saw I saw it in theaters. I'm embarrassed to say. I mean, I was only I was 14 or 15, right? So like, I, you know, it's not like anyone's gonna hire me to be a film critic at like the New York Times at that age to begin with. But, uh, I saw it, and I definitely, like, my parents were like, what'd you think about The Matrix 2? And I was like, they, I didn't think they could make it better than the first one, but they did. Like, it's probably one of the best movies ever made. Then, uh... I saw it a year later, maybe, maybe two years later when I got a little smarter, and I was like, actually, it's not very good. And then, I I will say, you change a lot at those ages, right? Like, I saw The Matrix 2 in theaters and was like, this is the greatest movie that's ever been released. And then I saw um, The Matrix 3 on a home video after it came out, and just the difference in, in my age between those two movies, I was like, okay, you lost me and I never want to watch anything related to the matrix ever again it's it's just not this is not i don't the whole movie takes place in zion man that's not what i want come on will you watch the matrix 4 100 percent chance absolutely no question i might wait till it's like on netflix or something Ah, I might see it immediately. I don't know. Ah, thank you. Yeah, I heard the Ani... The Ani... <laughs> the Animatrix is, uh... Is really good, but, you know... I think I, I missed my window to be, like, super... Into it. Which would have been, like, before I became cynical about the Matrix to begin with. I really should have watched it when I was, like... 15. I think I would, that would have been a, a great synergy. Perks. Who took my cigars? How about the Matrix video games? Have you ever seen um, the end of... I'm not sure if it's Enter the Matrix or if it's The Path of Neo. But have you ever seen the end of that game where he fights like an Agent Smith that's the size of the Empire State Building? It's, it's horrible and amazing. It's crazy. Mega Smith was the path of Neo. I like it. he has a name. <laughs> he has a name. And yeah, and the directors talk to you, exactly. I will say, so I was watching TV yesterday while I was, uh, you know, also on baby duty. And there's this channel we get in, in Canada right now. I think it's like a free trial. And it's very much... Uh, of interest to me because it's exactly what I do for work except uh, a c premium cable channel it's called uh, and forgive me here I might be slightly uh, mispronouncing it but I believe it's called Ginks and it's like a an esports slash let's play premium cable channel I was like man this is a bold business model I watched a 30 minute show about Fortnite, where a lady, um, she was, like, it's work from home, it's COVID, I'm not trying to, like, cause problems, but she clearly, like, did not even memorize the script before she went live with the video, like, she, uh, she was re- you could see that she was reading off her computer monitor, she was going, like, you know, and there's another great weekly clip coming from Nick Merckx. He used a UFO to grab somebody when they were about to use a bounce pad. Take it away, Nick. And she's just staring like dead center at the computer monitor. Um, and I was like, this is so weird. And it was just like super strange, low bitrate Fortnite compilations um, with like occasional commentary over top of it. It's... 
how do you... I, I, the, so I know the answer for this. The answer is uh, kids, right? The answer is that it's for children. Probably like single-digit age children. Um, but the other thing is that... Uh, thank you. It's kind of a bold play, right? Like, YouTube, you can get whatever you want for free. Uh, on demand. Twitch, you can watch anybody play anything you want. On demand. For free. With the option to sub. But then Ginx is like, hey, pay us five bucks and get a digital cable box. And then, at any given uh, point, hopefully we'll have a show on that interests you. Like, it's, it's, it just strikes me as a bit of a, it, like, it's moving backwards. So I watched, like, six or seven hours of that, and then I was like, ah, this is stupid. But I was uh, saying, like, if it had existed, I said if it had existed when I was a kid, I would have loved it. Because I went crazy for, like, anything related to video games on the TV when I was a kid. But the catch is that... It would also need to exist without YouTube existing. Um, which obviously, you know, is not the case in reality here. G4? Yeah, uh, and they, they didn't really have G4, I think, in Canada. I caught it occasionally on my, my grandparents' uh, gray market satellite. Multi-dimensional baby? Leave. Get out of here. We don't want you, man. We're good. Yeah, yeah, just don't forget the fool card. This this should be an easy win, honestly. <clears throat> Ginx was here in the UK a while ago. That is something that a lot of people might not know about Canada. We do have a tendency to get the United Kingdom's hand-downs. Or hand-me-downs. Sometimes I think they, they run like a trial market for stuff in the United Kingdom, and then they're like, oh, our audience was too discerning, but give it to the Canadians. Go ahead and give it to the Canadians. They'll go crazy. <laughs> then I think... Uh, we also pass it down. I don't know where it goes from that point onwards. Every once in a while you hear from somebody from like... You know, Macedonia, who's like, I'm a big fan of this hour is 22 minutes. And you're like, really? I wouldn't have expected that. Okay. Squeezy. We, we like it. We like it. It used to just show trailers on repeat. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something interesting here, okay? I think... Although Satanic Bible is great, I actually think we're going to roll... Ah, uh, we can keep the Fool for now. I think we're going to roll Book of Shadows. I'm making an at-runtime decision. Most of the time, you're going to be better off with Satanic Bible. Here, I think Book of Shadows for the invincibility. Then we can get right up in the enemy's faces and we can just smash them with our, you know, toxic sneeze over and over. I think it'll it'll wreck shop. It hurts, but I agree. Pardon me. There's there's American stations that get Canadian hand-me-downs as well. I feel for you. I know like some people watching this are are you know died in the wool Canadians, died in the plaid Canadians, myself included. But I will say like I think. Uh, we, we don't make the best media. We do disproportionately well in, in the arts, but TV is like the one that I think we do the worst in. Okay, so that'll stay open. There's so, yeah, but everyone's like, you know, na like there's one awesome Canadian show that I love or something like that. But that's like, you know, there's like two shows. There's Kenny versus Spenny and then like Shit's Creek.
What a what a rip, man. And letter, okay, sure. I'll give you letter, Kenny. I suppose I don't really like letter, Kenny, from what I've seen. But uh, I don't know if I just went in with unrealistic expectations or something. Does every episode have like um, parts where people are in the restaurant talking to each other uh, and having like an argument about? social etiquette because like I, th I honestly what I think it, I think it's just too close to like what I do for a living I was like watching two people in a bar have an argument over like you know Pilsner or something and I was like it's just too I already live that Lud of the Marty I'm still getting used to the fact that that Lud of the Marty is uh, an angel item man You know what? That's a good way to describe it. I, I think it is kind of the Canadian, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. But maybe with like a little... A, a little less meanness, I think, but... Whoops. Isn't South Park Canadian? It is not. It is not Canadian. Don't put that evil on us. Yeah, it's, it's Colorado and Colora Coloradoan, Coloradoan. I still maintain that like the final exam for English as a second language students should be correctly pronouncing the phrase Colorado Avalanche. There's like seven different vowel sounds of A. Even I, I can't do it reliably unless I really think about it. If I mindlessly have to say the phrase Colorado Avalanche, I'm always like, it's the Colorado Avalanche. It's a hard express. It's a hard thing to say. I didn't think about it when I was a kid, but now that I'm older, I'm like, man. The Avs. There you go. That, you know what? You get a D minus, but you do get you do graduate. Congratulations. I got to give you style points. Love to have the Avalanche over on my deck. Joe Sackick, Adam Deadmarsh, Peter Forsberg. You want a White Claw, Peter Forsberg? Just love when you get when I get a hammered on your deck. <laughs> hey Milan Hayduck, I love when you I love when Milan Hayduck gets hammered on my deck. I'm I'm trying here. It's not <laughs> Kristen Scrastens. I'm I'm trying to think of like the most ridiculous uh Al uh, I was going to say Alexander Hamilton. It's the most ridiculous uh, Colorado Avalanche players. Yeah, I gave Alexander Tange uh, HJ on my deck. Remember when Joe Sackick stuck his friend into a snowblower? Are, you Are we talking about the end of Fargo? Cause that's not a snowblower, my man. <laughs> Nor is that Joe Sackick. <laughs> now that I think about it, but sure. His hand, not his friend. Oh, my, my mistake. Mmm. Wojtek Walski. Hey, Wojtek. You want to come over and have some white claws on my deck? I love to get hammered with you on my deck. There are, I mean, the hockey, look, the NFL has some great names. There's no question about it. But uh, the NHL has some all-time classics. Miroslav Satan, also known as Miroslav Satan. Great name. Zygmunt Palfi, fantastic name. I mean, that's all I got right now, but there's a lot. Cliff Poo, Martin Furk, Ron Tugnut. Ron Tugnut is a really good one. 
That's the, I'm not denying that. Sigmund coffee? It's is Sigmund Palfy, okay? You want coffee? You're talking about Paul Coffee. It's a different guy. Bobson Dugnut. Oh, yeah, hey, don't forget about Radic Bonk. Radic Bonk, such a, a, a landmark player. We do have a chat member called Radic Bonk Forever. Also, like, one of the all-time great third-line third centers. <laughs> that was a fall, guys. Obstacle. Thick Bonkus. Radic Bonk made me a Sens fan. Dude, he's he's doing some great. He's good for the Sens. He's good for the Canadians. He's good for the, the Predators. I gotta stop shooting the wall on my deck. With my deck. Steve Iserman? I mean, that's a classic name, too, yeah. Iserman? Jonathan Marchessault? Shut the F Lil D. Quit wasting my. Go suck on your mummy's titty. Stop wasting my time. No, I will not take. I can, I can see you, but I won't. Your dog is as ugly as you are. Stop wasting my time. I will say I apologize to Abs fans. As far as I'm concerned, I, I did accidentally curse the uh, the Abs. After the Abs beat the the Knights seven to one, I said uh, I really don't want to see Vegas advance to the next round, but it appears that's not going to be a concern. My mistake. <laughs> I would say oof, but it's it's an unearned oof because I'm not an Avalanche fan anyway. So like, I just I, I feel bad for cursing you. I apologize, but it do be kind of funny though. I gotta say, uh, not not an enormous fan of like conjoined here. Don't stand near the wall. Yeah, I'm. Like, I hear you. Uh, it's kind of hard, though, because, like, the whole uh, map is a wall. There's, like, 30% of the room that's safe, and, and I don't necessarily control where I can stand. You know, it's up to the, it's up to the game. Like, what do I do here? I guess you pop this. That's a good point. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, well, that's my fault. I was I guess I was standing close to the wall. You are at the center of a conjoint. You really think I won't push you up against the wall? In prison? <laughs> it's from the office, man. It can't be a controversial quote if it's from the office. Hmm. Trade offer. I receive a potential run ruining item. Or a run saving item? We do we did lose our sneeze though. That's not so bad though. <laughs> Is it going to explode? Yes. So in that case. Alright, what let me put it this way though. If we make it through dogma, all enemies are going to uh, be ashamed of their words and their deeds. Okay, um, It would be nice to keep 3 HP for Dogma. <laughs> Things changed pretty quickly here. And guess what? It's never gonna end. Big Book of Shadows play. And if only we had uh, almond milk, right? That really hit the spot. He's 
It's not bad. I don't know. I'm I'm surprised at how many people are going like, uh, this run is ruined. I disagree. Like, until we're dead, it's not ruined. We have a ton of damage. Whether or not we're going to live long enough to see it work remains to be seen, but... Yeah, it's only mildly ruined right now. Just relax on the whole bed stuff, okay? We the, Not everything has played itself out yet. Case in point. I was just trying to see if there's a way that we could get... Yes, there is a way that we can get more out of this. Not much more, but something. It's true, I could have used the one red heart, my bad. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna farm it with nine lives, because then we'll go into the dogma fight with one HP. It should be fine. I'm not saying they're, it's not throwable. But it should be okay. This phase is like, is no problem. The next phase is a bit of a cluster, but... Perfect attack for us to poop on. This one goes out. Look, I'm not I'm not trying to be antagonistic. The antagonism was brought to me. This one goes out to the guy 5 minutes ago who typed in chat, "This run is going to win," and then captioned it NL 15 minutes ago. As long as we're playing the hindsight game, guess what? The hindsight bias has been brought against you now. You don't have to continue the antagonism. I'm not. I'm ending it. <laughs> Via mine own actions here. Yeah, this is unlosable. I know that this is inviting comedic timing into our lives, but it, it's really like... It's a, it's a tough one to imagine a loss appearing. Let's put it that way. I don't know if I can actually get up there and, and do any damage without risking my neck, but there you go. Ten, ten lives pretty much guarantees this one. I wouldn't be so sure. You you should... I Unless our speed is so low, we lose like six lives getting sucked into the Isaac attack or the Beast attack. I mean, I think it's... is is mighty close to unlosability. Yeah, we have 16 HP Brimstone Mom's Knife. One for one McDonald's BTS meal burger. What I gotta realize is that we don't just stab, or we don't just use the knife as like contact damage, we actually wanna stab. Because then we get the explosions out of it as well. Whoops. Worth. What character is this? <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, this is tainted as Azel, which is uh, a, a bit surprising because we aren't really doing too much sneezing, but uh, it do be tainted as Azel. I think all we got to do is... Make it through the fire wave, then when he comes back, we'll press the space bar and just walk into him and he'll die. So here, I'm not sweating it at all. Just go ahead, shoot some beams at me and, and then get ready to be erased. Thank you, Dry Baby. As always. This thing looks like a Simpsons character. <laughs> 
One eyed mon with three eyed monster. Come on, I mean you're you're done. You're toasted. He's like six hittable. Destroyed. Okay, great run. Azazel's Rage has been unlocked. Hey, can can I copy your Anima Solo homework? Sure, but don't make it too obvious. All right, it looked a lot more similar in the uh, <laughs> in the in the panel art that popped up in the bottom right. I promise you. <laughs> Slash marker. He will never win this run. 